beginning. Uh, so there are only three, uh, three types of antivenom produced locally in Indonesia. Yes. It's only, well, only one uh, antivenom, which is polyvalent antivenom, and it, uh, it can be used to cure for three species, three different species, the uh, Calosilasma rhodostoma, the terrestrial vipers, the crates, Pungarus candidus, and also uh, for spitting cobra. So if, 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 you're, if you are bitten by a crate mm -hmm. and you go to the clinic, uh, there's a good chance you can... Yes, I think, yeah, I, I think when I get bitten by a crate and then go to the clinic or hospital, I think I, I have a bigger chance to get these antiphenoms. But if you're bitten by green tree viper, if I get bitten by this uh, fiber, we don't have any uh, antivenom in Indonesia. It's not available. So you in have Indonesia. to immobilize. Yes, I have to do uh, immobilization. Sorry. Is there a usefulness in using the one for calosilasma if I get bitten by green? I don't think it will be useless because they are, are originated from different genus it will be useless or useful useful useless sorry it will be useless i mean it will be useless yeah okay if you use uh, calosilasma antivenom mm. to uh, to cure the uh, the the or the victim of trimerosia and you were actually bitten by snake before yes i well multiple times but <laughs> the one specific time you were bitten also by, by trimerosaurus yeah by trimerosaurus and since uh, I don't, we don't have any antivenom, I have to do uh, immobilization. I have to immobilize my hands, my limbs, and then uh, I have to rest for one week. And then I have to, to consume uh, nutritious food in order to get my, uh, my immune system be able to stand against these antivenoms. So your only chance of fighting is basically your body has to respond. Yes, I have to. Uh, yeah, my my body have to respond using my own strength. If your pet is bitten by a crate, mm -hmm. you oh, if, yeah. If my cat bitten by a crate, I can use this uh, Indonesian polyvalent antivenom. But I think no pet clinic will have the antivenom. I don't think pet clinic. Uh, store or provide the antivenom, yeah. this antivenom. Yeah, we, we don't know that for a fact, but yeah. it would be certainly not every clinic can afford to have antivenom. And, uh, and you, how long does it take for the venom to, if you get bitten on the hand, how long mm. does it take for the venom to travel up? Okay, it's around one to three hours. So it's 30 minutes, I think it will move around five to seven centimeters uh, along the body. So five to ten uh, yeah, around so like this. So if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're running mm -hmm. after being bitten, the venom is going to move faster? Yes. For what reason? Because a venom stayed on the, in the uh, limb gland, right? Because uh, limb gland will moving around or uh, moving in our body when we are moving so it stays in the in the in the limb gland when that's why we we have to immobilize ourselves or the or the victims because when when the the limb gland is uh, immobile or stay still the phenom also stay there it's it's not going to move mm -hmm. so when we're moving around so the venom will spread uh like like uh, like a driver, so the uh, the uh, the limb gland is a driver for for the venom to move across the body. So if if you are bitten by a viper, mm. like let's say Calosilasma, mm. uh, you're immediately bitten and you're in the middle of the forest. It's maybe mm. okay to run a short distance to get help, or should you immediately walk slowly? Okay, uh, it depends. On the body part get bitten if it's bitten by uh, 
on your legs, it's difficult. You you still have to to ask people to to carry, to, you. To carry you there. But if if it if it get bitten uh, in your hands or your upper limb, you can immobilize like this, and then you still can walk. So in the case of this story, the owner of the cat mm -hmm. uh, said that the cat was bitten by a green snake with a red tail. Mm -hmm. Now they live in Jagja. Mm -hmm. So if I say to you, that's the snake, can you identify the species? Yes, it must be Trimeresurus uh, albulabris because in Java usually and in Jogja especially it's only one species that uh, a cure of the, uh, with this characteristic, it's only a uh, Trimeris mm -hmm. and, uh, and And despite that fact, like uh, mm -hmm. Insularis is still mm -hmm. found in Java, in East Java. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the main differentiator between these two snakes? For quick uh, determination, we can use the, the eye colors or the, or the pupil. When, when the eye color is uh, yellow, it mm, most probably albulabris when uh, their eyes is red most probably it's insularis mm -hmm. and so that's a quick indicator that would tell us yes mm -hmm. but not a conclusive indicator yes uh, it's a quick indicator but it's not uh, scientific identification if you want to to uh, to recognize uh, the species you have to uh, see the scales uh, around the head, you have to count the scales around the head and around the body, I think. So, Abolabris means literally white lips. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the name is very specific, white lips. White lips. Mm -hmm. But sometimes in Solaris it's also called a white-lipped white -lipped yeah. viper. Yes, because, uh, well, you, uh, I think both are white-lipped vipers, but since uh, Insularis only in small island, that's why they have their own different uh, 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 specific name, the Insularis, meaning in, in, insular meaning uh, islands. So they are coming from the islands. Both are actually white lip mm -hmm. because both have a similar morphological uh, sign, the uh, li uh, white lip on their, on their head. Which I still don't see. Uh -huh. yes. But, okay, so, so it's just that, uh, so it still can be called that, but that's not really the proper common name. Yes. Mm -hmm. It should be Lesser Sunda Island. Uh, maybe, this is my, my, my hypothesis, why they, 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 uh, they name it White Leap? Because uh, I think they already stored in the, uh, in the, in the preserved liquids and then their color is bleached so it's become mm. whiter on, oh, okay. on, on that yeah. on the uh on the mouth on the mouth more whiter compared to the head i mean yeah this uh light green become with this mm -hmm. because yeah. of the bleaching process and then the scientists saw it as a white and then they name it white lip that's my hypothesis and that's you what usually happen to other species yeah, now we're going on a different tangent, <laughs> yes. because this is basically, so the, the implication is that many species are actually incorrectly named because the sample is not a living sample yes. that they were looking mm -hmm. at. Yeah, that's, now that's a different question. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So if we are in Jagja, mm -hmm. the answer is pretty easy. We know that it is going to be Abolabris because we don't find Insularis in Central Java. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, if we are in East Java, now it's more difficult. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. So, yeah, but mostly in East Java is for Insularis one, mostly. Uh, but in Central Java and West Java and Yogyakarta mostly, or naturally, we found only uh, Alpulabris. Do you still find Insularis here? Some record, yes, we do find several Insularis, not several, only one or two Insularis in the wild, but I'm not sure 
that it was naturally or it was uh, introduced. Yeah, introduced. Mm. And uh, Albalabre should not be found east of Java, only as far as east of Java. Mm -hmm. But it's still some are found in Bali. Yes. Yes, I think uh, in some or in previous research, Albalabris can also reach Bali, and it's possible to to have uh, Albalabris in East Java. But I think uh, when you go farther eastern, it's it's impossible to find them after Bali Island. Yeah, so like uh, we should never find Albalabris in Lombok or east of Lombok. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless maybe it's accidentally transported by human. Yes. Mostly they found in Solaris in, in, in East Java. But to be sure, we have to do molecular analysis. So most of the snake bite from green tree viper is going to be from in Solaris in East Java. Normally, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you think that actually the in Solaris outcompete Albalabris in uh, East Java? That's difficult to say. Their but, range overlaps. Uh, yes, their range overlaps, their habitat overlaps, their price overlaps. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. But you don't know the research into both. Yeah, there is no, yeah. Them. Research about, uh, about this, about how these insularists can uh, outcompete the uh, the Albulabris one. We we discussed the fact that in Solaris uh, we still don't know the the reason that in Solaris is found in East Java. Uh, whether it is purely transported by people, because you mentioned that uh, people have said that it's been mm. there for a long time already. Yes, so far I didn't found any scientific uh, explanation on this, but uh, based on yeah on, on local people that uh, they said that it already there for many years ago. Yeah, maybe we can uh, assume that they were already there, uh, naturally occur there. But we don't know if they were introduced yes. a long time ago. Long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or actually, that's why I asked if you know when they became different species. Because uh, if they became different species in Java, then it's okay that you find insularis there. Mm -hmm. but, but if they became different species after, like, you know, after the Ice Age and the mm -hmm. uh, Sunda Shelf is underwater, once. I assume these snakes cannot swim. Yes, they cannot swim. Yeah. Mm. So as soon as the sea level is too high between mm. Bali and Java, mm. there's no way for them to naturally disperse. Mm. Yes, that's correct. So only... No. Okay. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's impossible for them to, to cross this uh, geographical barrier, especially when they... Uh, the sea level is rising up because they are uh, they're not water snake and they're living on trees so it's impossible for them to, to swim across this this barrier yeah so it has to be taken by human or maybe just yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah, accidentally. Mm -hmm. unless they were already in java when the sea level rose mm -hmm. we need to study more mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we, we need to study more using 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 uh, molecular because several uh, people said that uh, the red eyes snakes, the uh, viper snakes, already there many years ago. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but since we don't have any study about molecular one, we don't know their their uh, their origin. But yeah, the the problem is that we found uh, in Solaris in East Java and many people, many uh, Japanese or East, Eastern Japanese people said that it was the red eyes one, it was there since many years ago.
When did they oh, split oh, the, into new species? Ooh. That's difficult. For a fact, though, there mm. are, for a fact, different mm. species. That's not taxonomic uh, nonsense going on. Like they are categorically different species. I can give you an example about other snakes, the Tendrilapis one. Tendrilapis also distributed uh, similar to this. You have uh, in Nornatus, it's only uh, in, uh, in the Lesser Sunda Islands. That it was uh, considered as a subspecies. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when you study molecular one and other uh, morphology, uh, com uh, morpho uh, molecular with the morphological, now these uh, subspecies, they uh, they're move into a higher rank mm -hmm. as a different or their own species. What species is that? It's a general lapis one, the, the painted bronze, bronze spec snake. Which doesn't look like these ones. No, no, not, not the fiber, only colubrid one. Oh, colubrid. Yeah, the colubrid. It, that's already, uh, yeah, they, they, they already studied using molecular and, and also the, uh, the morphological yeah. one. The morphological one. I don't know about this. The, how many, I haven't, in, in between Java and Lesser Surinder Islands, there's only yeah. two green tree vipers. Yes, as far as I know, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I'm still, that's why I'm curious because the premise of the video is mm -hmm. the fact that you can identify Abdul Abdes mm -hmm. knowing that it's in Jab Jab. Mm -hmm. So if a person say green snake, red tail, you can say, yeah. there are other green snakes in Jab Jab, right? But not by not fiber, yes. And mm -hmm. uh, but green body, red tail. There's no other non viper No other, yeah. Only one with the with the red tail, with the red. Which is which is one. yeah, Albolabris. And so other green tree snakes we might mm -hmm. find here. Mm -hmm. A will not have the red tail. Will not have red tail. It will have a silver tail. But it's not. Yeah, I so, think it's unvenomous. So if I am walking in the forest and I'm bitten by snakes suddenly, mm -hmm. uh, I should try to at least know, because when I go to the doctor, yes, because we have, uh, yeah, it's important for us the victim to identify the snakes because it will help a lot. It will help the doctor to to choose the proper or the correct uh, antivenom. If so, it. So it matters that, that the woman, like she at least said, so it matters that the owner at least said, aha, it's a green snake that, mm. that bit them. If, if uh, how difficult is it if I don't know what snake bit me? Oh. That's quite difficult because, uh, especially for green snakes, green tree snake, we have at least three species of Green tree. What, uh, what about between the ones we do have the antivenom for? So let's say I'm bitten by snake, and it might be cobra, might be crate, might be viper, but I don't know. Is there a procedure for the doctor? Yes, there is a procedure for the doctor. Uh, it's wait and see, or not wait and see, it, to observe their, uh, their symptoms. Mm -hmm. So yeah, doctor, or when, when the victim cannot identify it, or knowing the uh, the uh, the species or the snakes, the so doctor have to observe uh, the, the the symptoms, whether the symptoms is closely or more likely uh, symptom of uh, hemotoxin or neurotoxin, and then he can continue to other procedures, mm -hmm. meaning okay, for if it, if it's uh, a neurotoxin symptom, you have uh, probably or cobra, when it's a uh, hemotoxin, is probably the calocelasma or trimerisus. Yeah, so, but that means you cannot act immediately. No. It's, yes. You have yeah, to wait. To wait. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's important to, if you're the victim, to at least try to, mm -hmm. to see the snake. Yes. Before. 
Yeah, before it's run away. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I forgot what I was going to ask before the question. Uh, yeah. So the the premise of the video is is basically the a uh, how we can learn from this tragedy mm -hmm. that it's in the it's a way for us to identify a species because uh, you can say that like okay green body red tail mm -hmm. but in East Java that's not enough now the thing is that it does not really matter because either way there's no antivenom yes mm -hmm. so if you know it's a viper you just have to say okay we're going to treat it like a viper Actually, I want to explain this, but I don't know. Maybe we cannot record this off the record. This is off the record. Off the record. So, so, uh, so I mean, like fundamentally, of course, mm -hmm. it's not going to matter too much mm -hmm. in terms of administering it if they're just going to do it for the same genus. Mm -hmm. So the whether it's insularis or abelabris doesn't matter significantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The point of the video is just the the fact that by it's about the biogeography mm -hmm. that that the fact that uh, like we can identify the snake because we know that the the range is very limited yeah. and the range is limited because it cannot cross the specific boundary. Mm -hmm. The fact is that we might find Abu Labris in Bali, yeah. but uh, it's not common there. Yes. And mm -hmm. the fact is that we will not find it in east of Bali, in, in Lombok and, yeah. and the other mm -hmm. lesser Sunda Islands. So, so it's the fact that, that if we get bitten by green snake with a red tail, mm -hmm. we know based on the location, the specific one it will be because it cannot cross this, this yes. boundary. Mm -hmm. But I think if we have this antivenom, I think we can use uh, either for albulabris or insularis, I think, if we have this. If we uh, had it. If we had it. Yeah. But of course, uh, they're both are vipers. Calasolasma mm. is a viper. This is a viper. Yes. But that doesn't help because they're not actually closely related enough. Yeah, they're not closely related. Because they're different genus and they have different uh, habitat. The Calosolasma is terrestrial one and this one is arboreal. Maybe they have different specific kind of venom, even though they have, uh, well, in general, both viper have a uh, hemotoxin uh, one, but I think in specific it has different. It might be just different enough that it's not useful. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what can you think is the procedure for someone whose cat has been bitten by a viper? Okay. So it's basically similar to human. You have to do. You have to immobilize your cat. That's it. That's it. Give nutrition. Oh yeah, immobilize your cat, and yeah, and. Uh, and put the or put yeah immobilize the uh, the body part that was bitten by snakes and then you have to give uh, nutrition uh, to your cats and let them rest for a while while uh, and then w you also monitor her health regularly if uh, they are. Wow, it's difficult. I mean, it, for human, how to you how to measure the heart heart rate when you when your heart rate normal for human? I think it's easy how to to measure a heart rate for when when your heart rate is uh, higher, meaning that uh, that the phenom is attacking you. Mm. I think it's still possible. It's, it, surely, it's possible. Yeah, Monitor, yeah. monitoring. Uh, their health, yeah. uh, but but how I I can monitor? That's a question. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, for for, for human, I can yeah, I can give you advice. You have to immobilize 
your limbs or your body parts which uh, beaten and then you eating uh, nutritious food and then you can regularly monitor your health by using these uh, the, yeah some some tools but I don't know how to uh, what if you get a dry bite versus getting full venom okay dry bite will only uh, cause you swollen in in that part and then that's it uh, in two or three days it will be uh, well what is it in Indonesia flatten it it will be flat this one will will be flat yeah it will reduce and you still your health condition is still stable but uh, in systemic condition the swollen part will getting larger and and it's how do you say it's coming Drying up, up the, the, yeah the limb. yeah it it in it the, will spread yeah so the the, the swollen part will, will spread yeah in the case mm -hmm. of a cat mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, a cat is a small body. The prognosis must be worse than in you. Yes. Mm. Oh, how, how do you explain that for cats? Because I never. It's okay. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I, because I, I never, yeah, I, I never saw any any uh, any cat victims get bitten by by venomous snakes. But it's easy when you uh, when. When it's swollen and then cats, uh, they cannot uh, sit still. He's moving around, meaning that he's painful. And it, when it's painful, it could be one of the indicator that it's spreading, that the venom is spreading like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the summary, in summary, mm -hmm. I think that the the fact that the cat is bitten in Jangja, likely to be this snake, specifically mm -hmm. this one. And we know it because the insularis doesn't yes. come this far. Mm -hmm. We don't know the reason for that specifically, but we know it doesn't. Yes. We also know that in East Java, why Alba Labris is less than insularis, we're not sure why. But if you're bitten there, more likely to be in To be in If you're bitten by a green snake in Bali... Green viper snakes or only green... How many green snakes are there? Yeah, it's, it's, it's similar to in Java. I mean, you have okay. uh, two colubrid snakes with a green... Uh, two green tree snakes and two green tree fiber snakes also there. So there is a four possibilities. The, these two green snakes, if they bite you, what's the effect? It's uh, unvenomous. Man. Yeah, so it's okay. Yeah. If they did bite you, they're mm -hmm. non-venomous or a little bit? One non-venomous, one it's mildly venomous. With rear fat? Yes. Rear fat. Yeah, so if they bite you, they have to chew. Yeah, they have to chew. So you would know, like, they're not going like that. Mm. Or they maybe just if, trying to yeah. warn you. Yeah, if they warn you, it's okay. But with the red tail, it will always be yes. this one. Okay, I think that's it. I think we spoke for 90 minutes. 90? Wow. <laughs>